everyone. Welcome to Knife Maker Training here on YouTube and of course on our website, knifemakertraining.com. My name is Tim. And I'm Ed Caffrey, ABS Mastersmith, and this handsome young lad is Blade. <laughs> We uh, have been working on a series, uh, I'm really excited about it, it's five minutes with the Master Smith, and we have such a good time, there's no such thing as five minutes here, but um, <laughs> one of the things that we started uh, our topic on on the first video was what ABS is and what being a Master Smith is, what being a journeyman is, and what you said in the previous video in itself was mind-boggling. Um, I personally have never had a knife that could take the kind of abuse that you're saying is needed to even pass the first level mm -hmm. of, of being in the ABS as a journeyman. Um, do you, you want to add to that? Well, if that blows your mind, then we'll just jump right in. And since we've already talked about the journeyman smith, sure. the last one to talk about is master smith. Okay. Um, a lot of folks often ask me, particularly in today's day, they're not f so familiar with the ABS and the concepts, but Master Smith is actually the pinnacle of the ABS. It's the highest you could go. Um, you know, we previously talked about all the tests and everything for the journeyman Smith. Right. Master Smith testing is really no different, but there are some caveats. Okay. The first caveat is the performance blade that you must do your chopping, cutting, bending, and all that is required not only to be a hidden tang knife, whereas the journeyman smith is a full tang. Okay. Um, hidden tang being handle hides the tang of the knife. Right. Uh, but that knife also must be a minimum 300 layer Damascus knife. And How? so you have to perform all those torture tests to that same standard. How long does it take to do a 300 layer Damascus knife? By hand, if you choose to do this by hand, it's quite a, quite a long endeavor. Okay. Uh, you know, most of us old farts like me, <laughs> we have power equipment, presses, hammers, those sure. sort of things. You know, and frankly, I can make the Damascus easily in a day's time. But then, you know, you've got to forge the blade, you've got to grind the blade. Basically, you're making an entire knife. Right. Um, but again, all the tests are the same. You've got cutting the one inch rope, chopping the two two by fours, being able to shave afterwards. Go watch that first video. You have no idea the amount of detail that goes into the first test for the journeyman. I'm, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. watch that and then keep going. Yeah, and this, basically all the same things, uh, chopping the two by four, shaving, and then bending the blade 90 degrees. Those are all part of the performance test. But again, at the master smith level, it's required that it be done with a minimum 300 layer Damascus blade. Uh, the other caveat to the master smith testing is they the rules dictate one of your presentation knives must be a European Keon or Quillion, however you choose to pronounce that word. What makes that blade different? Uh, typically, you know, an average single-edged knife, you have a plane on one side, a plane on the other, and ideally, one plane mirrors the other and vice versa. Right. When it comes to a dagger, mm -hmm. a dagger has two planes on one side, two planes on the other side. So not only oh. must both of the planes mirror each other on a single side, sure. the uh, opposing side must um, mirror the other side. Right. So basically you're just doubling your difficulty factor. Sure. Uh, the other thing is that knife has to be a Damascus blade. Mm -hmm. um, and although this is not in the ABS rules, um, the handle must be fluted. So in other words, a fluted handle, spiral flute, or some cases a straight flute, depends on what the individual wishes to do. But the big thing is, and again, this is not in the rules, but this is something that comes by doing what I call your homework, being in the ABS, talking to people, understanding knives, that sort of thing. You have to inlay twisted wire in the handle. And basically, that can be gold wire. I personally, when I did my Master Smith test blade, I chose to use African blackwood for the fluted handle. Mm -hmm. Gold just didn't get, look good with that black, so I used pure silver wire. It okay. wasn't sterling silver, it was actually pure silver. Ooh. So there were, at that time, I think there was about $200 worth of wire, twisted wire, just in the handle alone. Um, There's quite an investment, I mean, not only in your time, 
but in the in the materials that are used to make these knives. Well, it can be. I mean, <clears throat> it, it's all based on the individual and where they want to take it. Sure. Probably outside of those caveats that I mentioned. Right. The biggest difference between testing for a journeyman smith and for a master smith is the level of craftsmanship that's expected. Right. Previously, I spoke about journeyman smith. The right. quality has to be excellent. To as, me, that says pretty darn good. Well, but that does also leaves room for some minor errors. Oh, okay. When All you right. get to the master smith level, the verbiage in the rules is outstanding to superlative. What that means is basically flawless. Uh, I remember back to the first time I was a judge at the ABS Master Smith testing, and I was kind of freaking out simply because I had been through it and I knew how much heart, soul, and time went into this. Yeah. Then the guy who was the head judge, he noticed it, you know, how nervous I was, and he come up, slapped me on the shoulder, and said, "Ed, this will be the easiest judging you've ever done." He said, "If it looks like a mistake." It is a mistake, and the knife fails. One of the things I didn't mention in the previous Journeyman Smith video is if any one knife that you present fails, that represents an overall failure. How many judges look over that individual knife set? Uh, I believe we have five plus a tiebreaker, or excuse me, six plus a tiebreaker, if I remember wow. correctly. And the way this is done is all of the presentation knives are taken into a room, laid out on a table, you know, by each individual knife maker who's testing. They then leave the room, we close the door, and then each judge starts at a different location depending on how many, you know, traditionally there's generally 10 to 20 guys per year testing for Journeyman Smith. That number's decreased dramatically at Master Smith Sometimes it's we're here as, to fix that. Yeah, sometimes it's as few as ten, or excuse me, as few as two individuals, and I think I have seen a couple of years where we've only had one test. Um, quite frankly, being an ABS Master Smith is a pretty exclusive club. As of right now, there's only 117 in the entire world. Um, I, if I may cut in, I, I'm I'm an artist. A uh, part of my company that is Legacy Studio Productions that owns Knife Maker Training. Mm -hmm. I draw caricatures and artwork and stuff like that. And one of the things I notice is that one person will look at this artwork and say it's gorgeous mm -hmm. and flawless. And another person will look at it and find a million mistakes. How on earth do you go you and look at a knife and then someone else look at it and be able to call it superlative? I mean, that to me is impressive to have that level of intensity, qual intense quality in a knife that five guys would say, all right, this guy's worthy of Master Smith because mm -hmm. all of his, how many knives are you supposed to bring for a master? You have to present five. And if any one knife fails, as I said previously, they all fail. So basically, and this might be overstating it, but at the Master Very Smith level... Club. At the, at the master smith level, things have to be as close to humanly perfect as possible. And, you know, that's just, that's the nature of that. Um, it takes a long time, a lot of dedication to yeah. achieve. Yeah. But, again, it's one of those things that, and I can only speak for Ed Caffrey because it was something that just came from my, my soul. And it was something I aspired to do. And frankly, it took me 89 to 2000 to achieve that Master Smith. Uh, but it's something that no one can ever take away from me. Mm -hmm. And it's something that with these series of videos, what I'm doing is I'm attempting to create a legacy and pass that knowledge on. Already done it. Already done it. <laughs> Already done it. <laughs> but, you know, and again, it's one of those things, you do it because you want it. Don't yeah. do it because Joe Bag of Donuts next door did it or your brother's uncle's cousin or something. Uh, and not everybody chooses to do it. It's fair to say you're not going to make it if your heart isn't in it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you're not dedicated, your you know, and they're, it's not for everybody. No. And that's fine. But, again, it's, it's a credential. Right, right. I've taken the time and effort the expense, whatever else is involved in it, to achieve 
the rating of Master Smith. Right. And quite honestly, what I found interesting was after I made my Master Smith in 2000, just a, a matter of months after I achieved that, uh, I was in here in my shop one day and the phone rang and it was the local college here in town mm -hmm. asking me, basically wanting to hire me to administer a metal arts program at the college. Mm. And you know, I hold a bachelor's degree, quote unquote, from college. Uh, and I said, well, you know, I don't have a master's teaching degree or anything. And the individual I was speaking with said, we saw in the paper where you were awarded your master smith status from the American Bladesmith Society. So in our eyes, you have a master's degree. So would you please administer this program? And frankly, you know, I did 23 years in the Air Force and I spent about the last 12 years as a quote unquote working administrator. Um, I love teaching. He does love teaching. I absolutely adore teaching, which is one of the reasons why Tim and I are here. Yeah. Um, but as there's far caveats as it, there. Well, as far as administering, that meant I was going to be the one building, creating the programs, hiring the teachers and all that. And long story short, I chose to just stay here in the shop and do my thing. Good thing, because now we put him to work. <laughs> which is cool. Yeah. Uh, our one thing that I want you guys to know is is the quality of workmanship uh, and craftsmanship that Ed has, because I mean that there are so many places on YouTube where you think you can get this kind of information for free. Um, I'm sorry, but there is a very uh, like you said, 117 individuals in the world mm -hmm. who contain this kind of level of craftsmanship. Um, you're not going to find that on YouTube. No. Um, and if if you are someone who's desiring to want to be in, I'm going to call this a hobby. This is not a hobby for Ed. This is not a hobby for many knife makers. This is an industry. This is a career. And this is how you've made your bread and butter for the last X amount of years. Yeah, since the day I, the day I retired from the military, I quite frankly took my uniform off one day. The next morning, put my boots and jeans on, walked into the shop, and... God bless my adorable, loving wife. You know, she allows me to do this. Yep. Uh, quite frankly, if you're a young guy with kids particularly, this is not the, you don't want to be a full-time knife maker. It's a tough way to make a living. It really is. Uh, which we'll talk about more. We have talked about that in other videos, and we'll talk about it more down the road. Right. Uh, but, you know, I call this a craft yeah. or a profession. Yeah. You know, there. That's the such a cool thing about knife making. Mm -hmm. All different levels, all different skills, mm -hmm. all different desires. I mean, you can go from being a guy in the backyard grinding on an old hacksaw blade, all the way to someone like me, who's gone all the way to pretty much the pinnacle of what you can do in this career or this craft, right. and have two whole shops full of tools. Right. Um, that's what's so cool. It's room for everybody. Yeah, and and the goal that we have is is to reawaken this. Like you're saying, there's not as many people showing up for these testings as much as they used to be. Uh, there is not as much information out there uh, because certain people want to really protect what they have. They really want to protect the hobby. Well, you know, I think now craft. when I came into this hobby, it was what I called the dark years, obviously. And right. the dark years, everything was a tightly guarded secret. When that all kind of melted away, for lack of a better terminology was about the time the internet started really getting big. Uh, you know, I'm an old fart, so I was here when the internet started, and I was pre-internet too in the knife world. Um, you know, you guys that grew up with the internet and gals that grew up with the internet, you know, the equivalent in my time when I started out would have been if I lived next door to the Library of Congress. Right. Um, you know, you have so much at your fingertips right now. Um, you know, things like this video. This, this wasn't around then. Yeah, and, and but some of the things at your fingertips could be completely wrong. You know, and that's true, Tim. And I'm going to say this with tongue in cheek yep. and a little... This, this steps on people's toes. Yeah, and I don't but, mean to. Yeah. But quite honestly, if you folks go out there, uh, YouTube is full of videos. Mm -hmm. But YouTube is also full of things that are going to get you hurt or maimed. Yep. And it's going to get you full of a lot of misinformation. Yep. 
one of the things that I strive to do, and again, Tim and I have both said it, there's a lot of different ways to do any step in this process. Yeah. And what I tell you and what I do is Ed Caffrey's way. Yep. Not necessarily the only way, not necessarily the right way, but it's the right way for me. Yeah. And I will do all that I can for as long as I can to ensure that the information I'm giving out is as accurate and as concise as possible. Right. And with all of your years of experience, I mean, we have we have seen that that is something that you're going to offer. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find, we're trying to make a place where everyone of any um, level can find the information you need to learn how to do this. Uh, and the information we're offering on Knife Maker Training it, on the bottom level or on the top level is going to give you a lot more information than than Ed got when he was younger trying to get into this. Um, Not many people read books anymore, per se. Not many people go all the effort that Ed would have gone to do that. And now we go on the internet and we find information that is, frankly, fake news. And There is a lot of that. Yeah, and so we want to fix that. Now, we do want to also say before our video cuts out on us that we aren't just making this for the people who want to become master smiths. We're no, not just no, making no, this no, for no, the no, journeyman. No, no, no. If you have a desire to handcraft something as gorgeous as a knife and you want to get the right information uh, that will keep you as safe as humanly possible considering what you are choosing to do for your craft, um, as well as just get you in the right direction to have the correct knowledge, then that's what we want to offer. Uh, this will be for the knife makers who want to go for the ABS tests or for yeah. the people who just desire to create something unique and beautiful that you did yourself. Yeah, exactly. But the information is important that you need to know. The safety, the, the techniques, the qualities, the frankly, the, um, the secret techniques <laughs> secret see and this this tim just said something that needs to be addressed so many folks out there think that but honestly if you know what you're doing not only on knife making but in any aspect of True. life if you know what you're doing and you are fully aware that you know what you're doing you don't have to bs anyone i mean one of the things that I tell people in this shop, there are no secrets, uh, because quite honestly, we all have to get there in our own time. Right. I can tell you everything I know, but that doesn't mean you can go and make exactly the same knives or the same level of knives that I can, right. because there is an experience factor involved. Right. Uh, but <laughs> for heaven's sakes, you know, learn to separate the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. And yeah. as long as Ed Caffrey's around, Ed Caffrey will always give you the very best I can with no fluff. When we recorded our first video here in the shop that started knife maker training, uh, Ed was standing in front of his grinders explaining uh, the, how the grinder works, how he built it, uh, what brands to get. And what really caught me off guard, my very first experience with Ed was his level of honesty. It, my my wife would call me brutally honest. Woo! There there was a there was pull no punches situation there where I mean he he did put companies out there that he said don't buy from these guys, buy from these guys and here's why. And that's one of the things I really like about Ed because you're going to get first off what Ed suggests and why Ed says this. Why this is important and then it goes on from there and he just has so much knowledge uh, from all of his years of how to set up a grinder, how to stand at a grinder, how to hold your body, how Mm. to uh, direct the blade for the best form. Uh, It's beautiful stuff that he does, but his his videos are pull no punches. uh, And let me me apologize right now if there's any of those things that I said that have been offensive to anyone. That's not the intent. No. You know, as Tim said, I call a spade a spade. Uh, I call it as I see it and I don't really sugarcoat stuff. No. And that's probably a result of 23 years in the military. Yes. Uh, you know, a guy's attitude changes over that time frame, but you will never, I don't coddle, I don't 
BS. It's just this is this is this it. Is, this is how it is. And if anyone's offended by that, I apologize in advance. Um, quite frankly, I my attitude is if you don't want the answer, don't ask the question. Uh, so, and I'm happy to answer anybody's questions. But, but just be aware, it may not be the type or the tenor of answer that you want. You're not, you're not going to have him saying, wow, this is great, when it isn't. <laughs> that, <laughs> but that's, Ouch. What, that's what makes Ed important, too. I mean, mm. seriously, if you're going to be a master smith and you're going to be judging other people's knives, yep. and which is something you've done for years, you cannot say, this is good. You have to say, uh, if you want to get to this level... You have to do it this way, uh, and you have to get to this quality. Uh, and that's not something that you can sugarcoat. Well, kind of the way to put this, and I, most of the other master smiths are of this same mindset. Mm -hmm. I tell people, when you walk up to me and bring a knife and say, Ed, will you look at my knife? Mm. My immediate response is, do you want me to look at your knife? Which in, which in that case, I'm going to be as kind and right. as generous and courteous as I can be. Do you want me to evaluate your knife? If that's the case, then it's going to be evaluated as if you were testing for journeyman or master smith. Right. And I quite literally. You ask that when they come. I to ask booth. that question. Yeah. If you yeah. want me to just look at something, yeah, I'll I'll be all smooth and honey and sugar coatery. If you want it to be evaluated as if you're going to test for journeyman smith or master. You've come to the right booth. Then but don't, expect right a, booth. don't expect an answer. Yeah, that's going to be it's not going to be, ooh, yeah. it's, it's going to be, here you go. This is what we get to share with you, and this is what I'm excited about. This is not, I mean, this is obviously not something to be scared of in these videos because you have so much to look forward to of correct information. Okay. So I'm sure our camera's about to die, so let's yep. go ahead and end this sucker here. Please follow us on Facebook, Knife Maker Training on Facebook, or you can even join our group, which is... Uh, uh, knife Maker Training group mm -hmm. on Facebook and just look that up. You'll find us right away. Uh, please check out our website. Look at the uh, look at all of the videos that we have as and well that, as our freebies. Yeah, and that would be knifemakertraining.com. Mm -hmm. Also look for us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I always associate hashtag Ed Caffrey MS and hashtag Knife Maker Training. Yep. And you can always, if you have questions or comments, contact me. All my information is on my website. Mm -hmm. And that is CaffreyKnives.net. Don't forget the .net. That's easy yeah. to get mixed up. Uh, and then also, check one more thing. Take a look at our uh, Ed Caffrey Signature Series sanding sticks. Uh, they are something that we've created that we're really excited about. Uh, if you happen to have one and you've gotten to use it, do me a favor. Take a picture of it on Instagram and put hashtag KMT sanding stick. That would be very helpful for us because we want to get them out there as far as we can. We're really excited about them. Thank you, and uh, we have a lot going on coming in the future. We're going to leave it there. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us here on Knife Maker Training and KnifeMakerTraining.com. And uh, this is Ed. This is Tim. And we will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye. Lunch time. Lunch. You want a meatloaf sandwich? Sure. Or are you still dieting? No, I'm not. I don't care.